Wait a minute. Okay. This is the edition unfiltered podcast. Honesty is the best policy. And so given the name of this podcast, which is basically a fancy word for honest, I felt that this would be the best place to talk about jealousy and envy. And the reason that I say this is because I'm boosting and boasting the fact that this is a safe place, a forum that, you know, gets rid of all the crazy filters in the world and just gets to the raw, unfiltered, for lack of better word, version of what you want to say. And to be fair, we see the fluff everywhere we look. It's on social media. It's sometimes in the books we read, the news that we listen to. Everything is filtered down and watered down when it gets to you. Even when you're having conversations with people, the thought that people have is not actually what comes out of their mouth. And so I go back to honesty is the best policy because when you really filter out that honesty, where does all that filter go to therapy? That's where it goes. But if you don't have the money to do that or go to therapy, you know what? You can just do what I did, start a podcast. And then that's where all your thoughts and feelings go. And so in its essence, this is my therapy and you guys are my couch. And I thought, let's get really uncomfortable. Let's make me really uncomfortable and really vulnerable because there are moments where envy and jealousy are a part of the way that I feel. And it's an uncomfortable emotion. It's so uncomfortable that we go through such great lengths to disguise it. We make sure no one can really tell that we're envious of them or jealous of them. And so before we get into the nitty gritty of me pouring my heart out, I feel like we really need to go over what envy and jealousy is. So I'm going to break it down for you in the most simple sense there is. And I think the best analogy is something that actually really recently happened to me. And it has to go with chocolate. So bear with me. It's a really long analogy. But by the end of it, you pretty much understand what envy is. So if you don't already know this, the chocolate in the States is not great. It plain and simple sucks. I would not recommend it if you come to America. Please do not touch the chocolate. Rather, I would say go to any part of Europe. Chocolate there is fantastic. And there's this one safe haven place called World Market that resides in the States that, if you can't tell from the world already, (laughs) has stuff from all around the world, which means it has chocolate. And it just so happens to have Maltesers, which, oh my God, just thinking about it makes me salivate. It's always low on stock or out of stock. And the day that I went there just so happened to be in stock. Obviously, I bought them. I bought two. Okay, no, that's a lie. I bought four. Okay, no, no, that's a lie. I bought eight. And well, to be fair, all the eight were not for me. Four were for my sister and four were for me. And if anybody knows me, they know that I have no self-control over chocolate. Absolutely none. So I ate my four in the first hour, if not less. And I really, really tried to savor the moment. I was like, I'm just going to have one now, one tomorrow, one the day after. But no, me savoring the moment was finishing them in less than an hour. But my sister, I feel like she does this on purpose, but she wait for me to finish the chocolate before she'll start eating the chocolate. And by the time I was done with my four, she hadn't even gotten to her one. And here comes the analogy. She started eating the chocolate and while she was eating the Maltesers, I was really envious because I wanted those Maltesers to myself. And when she got down to her last piece, she told me, okay, you know what? Since you finished all your four, I'll share with you this one. So this is now my chocolate and her chocolate. This is one bar that we will both share. And then she started eating it and I was jealous that she would eat it and not share with me. So envy is wanting what others have, which in this case would be the Maltesers that she was eating all by herself. And jealousy is protecting what you already have. So in the essence, I already had that one chocolate that we were going to share and she was eating it. So I was afraid that she wouldn't share that with me. I hope I haven't scarred you for when you eat Maltesers and just completely imagine me going on and on and on about this chocolate and jealousy and envy (laughs) but I'll put a stop to it don't worry let's just get into this now that you understand the fundamental difference between jealousy and envy and as we go through this you learn a lesson that envy is basically your heart's desire it's your deepest desire bubbling up to the surface and yeah okay I'm not gonna go into this more detailed I, I feel like I'll get into this after I get into the story after I get deep right? After I laid my heart out and all the ugliness that comes with it. So backstory, I get compared a lot. I don't know if this is something that happens to everybody, but it's happened to me more often than I'd like to admit. Actually, it's happened to me my whole life. 
I've heard there's always something about me that's missing that I could do better, that I could clean up my skin or take care of my hair better. Or, you know, someone else has taken a certain career path that I didn't take or they've gotten to a place in the same trajectory, same education that I have. And they're somewhere else and I'm somewhere else. Or when I was younger, she has better grades than I do, more polite than I am, less argumentative than I am. Just, you know, I could go on and on about the times that I've been compared. Oh, she's thinner than I am she has no acne and I do and it's just it's a constant cycle of comparisons and I've just grown up with it and I don't like to admit it but sometimes it gets to me it's hard to filter out that noise it's hard to love myself when there's so much of the outside world telling me that I'm not good enough the way that I am and that I or that I'm amazing but just not there yet because I have all these little steps that I need to take to get to where I am that other people have taken and gotten and that I should too. And so I want to I want to say naturally, but I don't know if this is naturally, but let's just use it in this instance as naturally. Naturally, I start getting envious and jealous of the people that I'm being compared to. And I get jealous. I used to think it was jealousy, but now that the small teases analogy has broken it down for me, I know it's not jealousy. I know it's envy. And envy for things that I want. So like I said, it's your heart's deepest desire is what envy is. And we know envy is negative, right? It's one of the seven deadly sins in Roman Catholicism. And for me, envy, I have learned that it is more educational. It's more instructive and, you know, even to some point, inspiring. And I'll get to why it's been inspiring. But there are two differences. There's malicious envy and there's benign envy. And malicious envy is, it's it's sort of just like basically makes you feel like the other person is rubbing your failure in your face. The other person is basically your carbon copy, but just better. And you just make, you just feel really bad about it. it makes you feel terrible. Whereas benign envy is admiration in its, in its, in its heart. It has a good tie to it. It can lift you up. It's you wanting to to be like them, to go down the same path and get to where they are. And in both in malicious envy and benign envy, it's not about the other person. It's about us. It's about our failures. It's about our desires. It's about our dreams and aspirations that other people have achieved and have gotten that, that you want and that you want to be able to get to someday. And so that's just basically what envy is. Even though it's taken into a negative aspect, it's it can be inspirational like it has been for me. But first, before it even gets to the point of being inspirational, I've learned to understand that the first thing that I need to do is stop comparing myself to the other person. Stop. Even though everyone else around me is doing that, I should not. And it's easier said than done. Everything is easier said than done. I'm sitting here on this brisk evening recording this podcast, talking about how easy it is to not let anyone's comparisons affect you when I know firsthand how hard that is, how terribly heartbreaking it is to hear somebody that you love tell you that you're not good enough and that the other person is because they do something better than you do and it's 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 hard I've learned to not let it affect me as much as it has before I want to get to the point where it just completely doesn't and to be completely honest with you I haven't gotten to that point yet but I am closer to that than I was before and the person that I've learned inspired me (laughs) to not care is my sister because believe it or not she's eight years younger than me but she's kind of my bodyguard you know she backs me up she's my fighter my boxing glove if you will if someone says anything bad about me or compares me and this is something that she's done since she was like old enough to speak she would say something back She would hate this person for the rest, like for as long as she could remember. She doesn't remember a lot of things, but there are points in life and time when somebody has said something to me that she will hold on to. Even if this person is like an angel to her and they've said something about my skin or anything, she will hate this person and she will back me up. She'll say something so honest that it shuts the other person up. And it doesn't matter if this person is six or 75 she has no filter basically the most unfiltered person you will see she will tell it to you like she is and she's she has no bounds you know what maybe she's the one who should be hosting this podcast and not me because even now as I'm speaking to you I'm really thinking about what I'm saying because I'm thinking about the comparisons of all these other people that do podcasts say and what they don't say and no I shouldn't I shouldn't do any of it I shouldn't think about what they would say and what they would not say because then what's the point of me putting 
myself out there if there is another duplicate version of me doing the same thing then we're, we're all doing the same thing then what's even the point okay that's a bit too dramatic but you get my point okay so back to the point without being dramatic is one thing that's really got me feeling envious and in this case both benign and malicious and even saying that makes me feel uncomfortable admitting it makes me feel vulnerable and I don't know if this is something that's universal, but when I feel envious, it starts in my stomach and I feel this weight that's just spreading. And within seconds, I can feel it in my heart to my feet. And you just, I feel the spread. And the reason I say both and I feel like a backstory is needed again. Wow, so many backstories, Jill, so many. Let's, let's try one more. I started my podcast in 2020. And as I've mentioned so many times before, I gave up. Probably something I will regret for a long time, but it is what it is. And I just left it to the world. And so I see all these people that are extremely dedicated, that are in amazing places, speaking to these incredible people. And it feels like it's rubbing my failure in my faces because if I had done what they did and if I had stayed the course and if I had pulled my socks up and gotten through with whatever I was doing, then who knows where my podcast would be right now? Who knows how many people would be listening? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> and so back to the point that I was saying, Envy just naturally comes. You have to be an incredibly sound-minded person with in so much self-confidence that the idea of somebody else living your dream the way you had imagined it makes no effect on you. And so, yeah, I'm one of those many people that feel envious. But here's where the benign envy comes from. I sometimes get lost in admiration as to how much courage and how much time and how much energy and how much dedication each one of these people put in that I didn't. The confidence it takes to speak your word and speak your mind and be bold and brazen and all those wonderful words with the way that you are and not feel ashamed of it is something extremely beautiful and courageous and one that I admire incredibly. And so that's what I have as well. So it's a mix of both. And it's a part of life, but I'm accepting it and I've clearly put my vulnerability out there because I think that's the only way we can talk about this as a normal thing that we all feel sometimes in moments of weakness, but it shouldn't be looked that way. It shouldn't be seen as negative. And like I said, the more you hide it, the more it bubbles up to the surface. And so I've come up with a solution that seems to work so far for me. And the first thing is that it is acknowledging that what you feel is envy. You might have these negative feelings inside. You might have this pit in your stomach when you see something someone else has accomplished and you haven't. And it's envy. Is It's you accepting that that feeling is envy and you understanding that it's not about them at all because you feel incredible happiness for them and it is completely about you. And once you understand that, you understand that it's letting you know that this is what you desire and this is what you'd like to have or something similar to that. When you clarify that, it makes it feel less negative. It makes it feel less like the way that you do and it's tamed down. It's basically like Hulk. He acknowledged that I get this way when I am angry and he calmed down to become the doctor and the anger just disappeared. And once you do that, once you accept it, you get to take a step back and get control of the feeling and understand that you need to stop comparing yourself. But wait, hold on. I just had a thought. Why is it green with envy? That's really interesting. I think that should be a fun fact Friday. Why is it called green with envy? I'll let you ponder with that thought while I get more deep now. <laughs> so you have to remind yourself that comparisons are not really accurate. And particularly for me, as I've told you my backstory a couple of times, I've had a hard time coming to terms with I am amazing and fantastic just the way I am and I don't need to compare myself to anyone else. And I know it's hard because my whole life that's all I've ever known, but I'm breaking through and I can't keep using that as an excuse to get away with how I feel. Things like this happen. That's just life. And I have to be completely honest with myself. And I've noticed that the feeling that I get in my stomach when I feel envious of someone is because I'm comparing me to them. And I feel like my failures are being rubbed in my face because I'm comparing myself to them since they've achieved much more than I have. And it is the same trajectory or the same path that I want to go down. But I was too coward or too afraid or too insecure to 
go that way and they had the courage to do that. And I can't be comparing pineapples to cars. That makes no sense. And it's, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like this thing that I, I, I thought of. So here comes another analogy. I know filled with analogies and backstories, but bear with me. I quite like this one. You can't take two seeds and plant them in two completely different regions, opposite sides of the world with different soil compositions, different types of climate, different weather, different bee species, different pollination patterns, different insects, all of these factors and expect the plant or the flower to grow the same way. That's just idiotic. And one seed could be planted seven years ago, one seed could be planted today. The one today is obviously not in the same place the one seven years ago was. And, and so you can't compare those two. The only thing that you can compare it to is the seed today and the seed yesterday. And that makes sense to me. That makes complete sense to me that you can't compare these two because they're not the same. And sometimes it's hard to remind myself because the feeling of being envious sucks. It really sucks. I hate feeling that way. I hate I hate that I feel that way towards other people as well. And I think that's the biggest, biggest reason that I feel the way is because you pretend that you don't feel envious and you just kind of shoot those feelings all the way down. And it actually just makes it more profound. As cliche as that, that sounds, it does actually happen. And sometimes, you know, it's even when I feel this way and the feeling is overpowering me, it's hard to remind myself that all this stuff that I spew out all the time, like I just did, it's really easier said than done because you can't help yourself but feel that way. And sometimes when you do it, just really overpowers you. And even though I have a rational explanation and these incredible analogies, it's fine if you don't think I do. I think they were quite incredible. I have been planted today and expect my seed to be as advanced and as, you know, incredible as the one that was planted seven years ago. And it, that makes 100% sense to me. But my emotions don't seem to understand the logic. The neurons that were supposed to send that message across have seemed to be lost in translation because clearly I'm still feeling this way. And I get disappointed and I get sad and I get emotional and demotivated. And here is where motivation and consistency comes into place. You get demotivated, but the motivation is not what's going to get you there. It's the discipline and the consistency is what's going to get you where you want to go. So even though I'm demotivated, I'm going to continue to do this because envy has now accidentally sparked this inspirational flame inside of me. And that flame needs to become freaking firework. And I need to continue to do what I'm doing for it to be possible. And the only way I can do it is continue to be putting effort and comparing myself to the person that I was yesterday to see the progress, to know that even though I feel like giving up, I shouldn't because you can see the difference. And when I see the comparison of today me to two years ago me, I don't feel envious anymore. I feel proud. I feel proud of the person that I've become and the person that I know that I'm going to become. So if you find yourself in this continuous cycle of feeling this way and being demotivated and trying to hide it and disguise it and just not accept that that's the way you're feeling, I think you should look yourself in the mirror. Accept that you feel this way. Understand why that this is not about the other person it's about you and see how the cards change see how things start falling into place and see how you see things more clearly because the filters are out and you can understand and you can move on and it's just a good reminder when you find yourself comparing yourself and you feel the energy of that feeling starting to sink through remind yourself you're a seed that's being planted very recently or today and They've been planted in different circumstances at different times with different shit going all around them. So you're going to come out the most unique and beautiful and wonderful flower. And there's nothing that you can compare it to. Anyway, I feel like we need to take things lightly right there. It's a random thought I had. I was watching uh, Suits the other day, which, oh my god. I think that was the most perfect ending I have ever seen in a TV show before. But has anyone ever noticed that this is not a universal thing that happens across all TV shows is when someone hands another person a piece of paper, the other person opens a piece of paper, takes a glance at it and knows exactly what that paper entails. And it's like an A4 size paper, 12 point Times New Roman font on it. It's 75% filled and these people literally just open it, look at it pause and they know exactly what's happened on that paper. I feel like this is a good takeaway. Forget everything else I said. Think about this. 